deceased a 10 year old child, but it's tragic for imagine what the school is feeling, what the teacher who's out is feeling, um, what the principal's feeling, the, pr the assistant principal, the nurse, and more importantly, the other little girl on the other side. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, they were kicking her. They ganged her. None of that is that's so far from the truth. Um, not even banging of head, the head, that was not even an issue. Imagine what the, um, the substitute teacher is feeling. Well, I asked, and I've asked my community to withhold their opinions on all of this, and I asked this Senate to consider some things, and number one, give us your prayers. We need to look at some things regarding our education system. I talked with Molly Spearman in all of this, and I thank her for responding to us. We need to seriously look at these classroom sizes. All of us are parents or have had to supervise children. Can you imagine grouping children in a classroom? And these are a lot of the times at at-risk schools grouping them 20, 22 students, and you got IEP students mixed with regular students. You don't know what sets folks off. In this particular case, it is, some, it is understood that they involved IEP students, as well as DSS had intervened previously. So you can imagine but I wish we could sum, I know we can't get back to the good old days where your teacher knew you and your teacher knew your parents. But you know what? I do know in looking at this, I've been asked many times, are you going to introduce anti-bullying legislation? That's the stupidest thing in the world. Because you and I both know children are not born mean. They're not born bully. They're not born to hate other students. So I think we got to look at it from what do we have control of. At, I would propose that we start thinking about these K through sixth grade schools. There should not be one teacher trying to supervise 25 kids. There's no way you can get that teacher can have a relationship. If the teacher was in a smaller classroom environment, that teacher would know what was going on with little Billy and what environment he came out of. That teacher would be able to stop a lot of the going back and forth. And that teacher would be able to separate them. From what I understand, I spoke with all of the parties involved here. These kids were bunched up in a class. Four desks all bunched together. Not even a lot of room to walk in the class. We've got to think about that. The other issue is we should consider what I think was proposed in the House, limiting classroom size, I said already, and we should consider mental health counselors in these schools. We've got to look at that. And the Teachers Association says a lot of, they've been complaining, I've gotten a lot of emails, they don't even get a school a break. They come there at 7 o'clock, 7.15 in the morning, and some of them, depending upon what area you have, you're with students until you go home. You, can't, you gotta have a mental break. We gotta consider the issue also of how we gonna integrate these special needs kids with the regular, regular population. I ask you to just look at this tragic situation and don't let young 10-year-old Renaya Wright's death or public persecution of the other folks to go in vain. Please don't. The other thing before I ask, sit down and ask for a moment of silence, Two days before the Renaya Wright incident in Walterboro was a young 21-year-old man in the military. He was on in reserves, had mental issues, called the cops, apparently, from what we're learning. And we feel like mental issues might have had something to do with it. But the police officer ended up killing this 21-year-old man. And I don't want to get into any speculations otherwise, but I do know, I know the police officer, know the family of the young man, 
and they are both very distraught because it was a young new officer. So I would like at this time, Mr. President, to request that the Senate take a moment of silence. Senator, if you would please stand for a moment of silence. For Renaya Wright, Colleton County Schools, and, all, and the Sheriff's Department, the victim, the decedent Derek Wright, I would ask that we give them a moment of silence and prayer. Thank you. Amen. Senator from Fairfield, Senator Fanning, for what purpose do you rise? You have a consent request. Say your request, sir. The remarks of the Senator from Colorado be placed in the record. Is there an objection? Hearing none, so ordered. From Colleton. Um, today, in honor of Renaya Wright. At the next available day. And Derek Smith. The next available day. Is there an objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Turning your calendar, page seven. Page seven, bottom of the page. Senate Bill 530, Senator Leatherman. Clerk will read. S530 is objected to. Now it brings us page 8. Page 8 in the calendar, top of the page, House Bill 3420. This bill relating to the Youth Access to Tobacco Prevention Act of 2006 so as to prohibit minors from entering retail establishments that primarily sell out tobacco, tobacco products, alternative nicotine products, or both, and amending sections relating in part to the definition of alternative nicotine product. Question is, third reading of the bill. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The bill is granted third reading. That brings us to the bottom of page 8, statewide second reading bills. Senate Bill 7, Senator Malloy. Amendments are on the desk. The clerk will publish the First Amendment. 